Hell yeah, brother. You're on the Please Me Fall on YouTube channel. All right, so guys, just got back in town, and it is almost the week of the Freedom 500. We got the Freedom 500 April 1st. I just got back from the Bristol race, went from Texas to Bristol, finally back in town. So we got a couple hours left in the day. I'm going to take you guys with me. We got to stop the shop. Ton of planning and preparation going on right now to make sure that the Freedom 500 is a banger. The guys at the Freedom Factory are going hard. The guys at the race shop are going hard. The guys in the merch room are going hard, so we're just gonna stop through, talk to everybody, make sure everyone's good. Alrighty, here we are, we're at the shop. You see the toter home is back under its canal. Had a tire blowout on the way back, so let's go check out the damage on that real quick. That's definitely not ideal. All right, so toter's back, but she's got a little bit of damage, boys. Yeah, just kind of bent this a little bit. You'd see the uh, cords whipped it. Zach's got it pulled in with a strap. So we'll get that kind of shaped up a little more, but you can see also here, damn tires blew out. Trailer wasn't that loaded down. Well, we got Sam and Parker over here doing turbo stuff. Turbo stuff, bigger turbo stuff. Bigger turbo stuff, that's good. Yeah, oh yeah. All right, cool. Oh, big Defender service day, huh? Oh yeah. Hey guys, how's it going? How you doing there, Buckaroo? What you got doing? A little change on this? Track Danny over here? Yeah, I'm a dirt track racer now. Is that a helicopter? Freaking Blackhawk, dude. Hell yeah. Yeah, I'm sending it out to get detailed today. That's that your black? Nice. That's yours? Oh. Looks good. Might sell it. Really? How much? Gas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's good. You guys are changing the oil on this stuff. You know, someone's got to do things around here that makes sense you yeah. check out the mercy Dude. isn't this thing sick yes so sick so sick. i don't know what to do it's crazy how like it's probably so much easier to work on yeah being that it's ls swap yeah i mean i can't imagine all the junk you'd have to go through with a real you know lambo slow setup lambo. slow lambo yeah. engine let's do the thing guys come on <laughs> you want to do it yeah we gotta do it gotta do it. it sucks all right Mullet, you son of a biscuit. All right, guys, here's the situation. You all know that we dropped out of TX2K. What the hell you got back there? <laughs> Trail for Jaber. Look at that mug. All right, so you guys all know we had to drop out of TX2K because our engine picked up a crazy sound. Before I get to the reason why that happened, I just want to say that those of you who uh, went through hell in the comments, you know, and talking about our engine builders and stuff like that, uh, you know, comment on Texas Speed's post and comment on our other engine builder fast forward stuff and, you know, saying stupid things. Great time for you guys to eat your words right now because we caused this damage. We actually had a bolt go through the engine from our very own part. And you know, I just want to say that it really puts us in a hard place when people blame our engine builders for things that go wrong, you know. We put these engines through hell and back, and yes, they blow up. We're making 2,000 plus horsepower, probably close to 2,300 through a small block LS. Car weighs 3,550 pounds. We're going the full quarter mile, pass after pass. Y'all are acting like these engines should be made of diamonds and they're, they're just bulletproof. Well, they're not, and you know, whether we tune the head gaskets out of it, or we put a bolt through the engine, or the thing just blows up, which has never happened. We've never had an engine just explode on the channel ever. It does not matter because at the end of the day, we gotta fix the car and go racing again. Blaming the engine builder or whoever, it doesn't really matter. We just gotta fix that problem and move on. So now I'm having the conversations with the guys who help us with our engine program. And they're like, dude, like I'm getting eaten alive in these comments. Meanwhile, a bolt went through the engine. If you put a bolt through the world's baddest engine, take a top fuel motor, put a bolt through it. Guarantee you, it's gonna screw it up. It doesn't matter who builds your engine. If you put a bolt through it, it's gonna ruin it. So now I gotta have these conversations with our engine builders that they're you know, getting hate. And it's for no reason at all because we're the ones who cause the damage. Essentially, at the end of the day, if you guys keep this up where when we hurt an engine, you go comment on people's stuff that it's their fault, we're gonna have no one to build our engines or help us with parts. And I'm gonna be building the engine and we'll make one 12 second run a month and then I'll spend the rest of the month rebuilding another engine that can run one 12 second pass. They are doing the best job they possibly can. 
we are putting these engines through the ringer. Not to mention people are also going after Nate. The tuners, the engine builders. I mean, I'm sure something's gone wrong along the way that's caused us to have to pull our motor out, but it does not matter because we're not living in a perfect world. The best thing you guys can do for us, you know, when something like this happens, when an engine breaks, is just wait until we know what actually happened, you know? We had not concluded any evidence. We hadn't found anything when we were in Texas. I just posted the video and people went crazy. And then just enjoy the fact that we even show you that this stuff happens and then move on with us. That's all we gotta do. A lot of people hide this stuff from their channels because of this very reason. I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna have to do that. Let's just, in the future, not be idiots when things go south because no matter what we do we are going to break more engines we're going to break more parts and that's just the name of the game and rants all right let's get to the good stuff oh nice doctor doctor ah, boys yeah that happened you see that pretty good there brother you can see it looks like some screws in there Yeah, you see some threads printed in there look at that one perfect yep. bolt right there and then you'll see on the head side some uh, nice little imprints there. Perfect bolt marks from a yeah. bolt that went into cylinder number one, brother. Ding, ding, ding. So obviously we two-stepped the car, you know. That's when the people were saying, oh, you guys are beating on the car in the pits and you know, Nate's got tuned wrong, all that BS. Nope, turns out as we, you know, we're just idling the car, a nut wiggled out of our throttle body and made it into the cylinder. Now this is where things get really good because what we had on this car was a prototype motion throttle body. And I'm not gonna hide the fact that basically our own part that we made is what took us out of the race. You know, it, as much as it kills me to say that we did it to ourselves, we completely did it to ourselves. You know, on a production motion raceworks throttle body, things are a little bit different. The throttle body that we had in the car is one of the OG units that we tested everything with. Bolts just weren't Loctited like we sent them out from factory. This is an OG one. We've had the blade in and out of it a couple times. I don't remember when the last time we had a part was, but it probably got put back together in a rush and the bolt finally made its way out. The other two are completely tight. Third one made its way out. We're gonna try and spin this in a positive way. This is like a tech tip Tuesday. You should always check the bolts on your throttle body, no matter what you have, no matter if you have a new one of these that's Loctited and staked, you should just check them and make sure they are tight because this can happen to anyone. I've heard of it happening. I never thought in a million years it happened to us, but it did and it was from our own part and it really freaking sucks. Not proud to say that, but I do wanna try and spin it in a positive way because it just reminds all you guys, racers, and uh, you know anyone who's got a car has a throttle body and it might be time for you to pull your intake off and check your bolts on that. That's it for mullet. <laughs> I don't really want to talk about it anymore. I'm hey, good news is about it. easy fix. I mean, a little bit of work, yeah. but you know, out with the old, you had the same piston, you know, yeah, the, our engine I builder knew. had one. We already got it. It's really exciting. Careful with that. Yeah, oh, it's not in there yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the good news is too, is that you know, the guys at Fast Forward knew that we were gonna tear up a piston eventually. I'm surprised we didn't do it when we leaned the thing out. We were running 13 to one air fuel ratio on methanol. That's about as lean as it gets on that second pass at the X2K. The piston was fine. Diamond piston was completely fine, but he had ordered us a couple spares in case we did lean it out and put a hole in it. Well, since we put a bolt in it, we already have a spare piston. So Zach is working on putting this thing back together. All the bearings in the engine look perfect. The head gaskets were perfect. Everything else was good. You guys might've saw also that I had commented that I wanted to do a big block in this thing no matter what. Situation is that we're basically making, damn, did Sam polish these? Dude, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> they like chrome. <laughs> the situation is that we're basically, you know, we're trying to make 2,500 horsepower through such a small engine that we're living on the edge no matter what we do. You can build the baddest LS in the world if we're running the engine at its max power all the time, we're gonna keep hurting it. So I do wanna put a big block in this. And I did talk to Steve Morris about that several months ago, but those engines take a while to get. So eventually we're gonna have a big block for mullet so that we can run the engine on like 70% of its power and still go faster than what we have now. But just running this LS tapped out every time is, is just gonna be problematic. Head gaskets, things like that. But if you put a bolt through an engine, no matter what, you know, you're kind of screwed. These LSs, you know, they do really good. And this isn't even the baddest to the bone engine that like, you know, fast forward can make. There is better engines, better options. 
But I just want to go to the big block so that I can eliminate the fact that, yeah, we're running on max power all the time and some bigger turbos and a big block and we're going to go real fast. That's it for mullet. Enough of the, of the depressing stuff. What are you doing, Jackson? I'm uh, going to make this thing roll again so that I can pressure wash the inside. Oh, we got an engine coming back this week. Shine, shine her up a little bit, fix yeah. some stuff that's been broken for way too long. We basically have one week until this has to be back running again. So we got a new blower. Yeah, it's New engine. Oh, we got the blower? All right, we'll get the blower open. How's the spark been treating you, bud? You glad to have her back? Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Here's the deal, I dude. I heard you guys almost got it re in, uh, impounded. Yeah, impounded. don't worry about that. Here's the deal, dude. New car. It's here tomorrow. Tomorrow, dude? Big yeah. day? Yeah, big day. Dude. Alrighty. New blower goofing over here. I know. How fired up are you feeling right now, dude? New blower goofing is one of the best feelings. Oh, in the world. For sure. Oh, from our boys. Slinging it open. Pew! Oh. VMP performance. So as you guys Dang. know, we had the VMP blower on here for a long time. Long okay? time. Seized it up a few times. <laughs> Forgot to turn the intercooler pump on. Blower screws grew. Caught the case. Shut the engine off. Cooled down. Back in action. So Still worked every they time. They said, we're going to get you a new blower. <laughs> Ooh, buddy. Stage three. Dude. Oh, yeah, feel that. Feel how much different that is than the old one. That's, That's a big boy right there. The other one had a little bit more resistance. How big is that? Do anybody know? <laughs> Bigger than the blower you got, bucko. 16. She's going to make some steam. <laughs> Look at that, dude. There's no scratches on the... Brand spanking. <laughs> oh, the there. Oh, Woo! Hey, remember to hook this up. Remember when we did that? Did she hooked that up that one time. Moon boosted it? Uh, no, it just overheated real uh, bad. We got a new blower, dude. What a great day. Oh, we got more stuff. Come on. Nice little brick. New brick, dude. Thick them. The intake manifold? Yeah, the lower yeah. something. This is the brick for the intake manifold under the blower. Yeah, ours is stuck. Damn, bro. This is going to help a lot. That's thick. When it's reaching 6,000 degrees temperature internal. Shout out to our boys at VMP Performance, dude. Coming in. Real clutch, getting us back going in under two weeks. So the engine is due back from L&M here in a couple days. And then we got to run new fuel lines, doing some new injectors, some things like that. And uh, neighbor will be back in action. Alex, did you check out the Mercy, dude? Yeah, that thing is the bee's knees. <laughs> Isn't that thing cool? I'm really excited. We got to wash it. Got a little dusty on the drive back. Parker, what do you think of the Mercy? I'm obsessed. <laughs> I sick. want it so bad. <laughs> Test drive, it's gonna man. be great. Yeah, we go for a test drive. Georgie, you've been working on these uh, Crown Vicks with Ty? Oh, Crown Vicks race right around the corner. Are they dialed? How you feeling, Ty? I feel like I'm about done. You're about done with Crown Vicks, dude? How many you got left? I got three more after this. Three more? You've already done 17? Yeah. Dude, you're so a we'll savage. Tomorrow. Hell yeah. Four days. Old welder's going hard. Dude. Just cooking along cooking them in there hey we know they're strong we ran the one over with the <laughs> yeah. tank dude, that was pretty cool <laughs> yeah i mean we know they're good so ty has been cranking away on crown vix george has been helping him because obviously we got to install the nitrous put the nitto tires on like this one's already got the nittos it's already got the nitrous system so this one's dialed they're putting the seats in putting the cage in three more to go and we will be ready i can tell you're putting on some muscle from this week <laughs>